Hello, my name is Maria Boyko. I'm from the University of Toronto. Uh, and uh, today we're talking to Arthur Avila, the winner of 2011 Brin Prize. And Arthur is a director of research at uh, CNRS, and he's the researcher at IMPA Brazil. So congratulations, Arthur. Congratulations on your prize. And please tell us about your award-winning work in accessible terms. Uh, so uh, I think the work was uh, there were three parts. One was my uh, work on one-dimensional dynamics that uh, started uh, with my thesis. So it's related to behavioral uh, dynamics in the quadratic family from the, for instance, measure theoretical perspective. And uh, uh, also some work on uh, complex dynamics related to uh, geometry of certain uh, Julia sets, so there are some kind of famous fractal uh, sets associated to complex quadratic polynomials. And otherwise, um, mm, then uh, the second uh, part that was mentioned was uh, my work on quasi-periodic uh, Schrodinger operators that was the topic of my, of my talk here, which uh, concentrated on some specific models that have been studied for, for some time, but are partially motivated by physics. And uh, we uh, dynamic, uh, well, so, so, so they, they're not in dynamics, but can, they can be studied through dynamical methods. And uh, uh, there are several uh, precise questions that remain uh, open after lots of work by the analysts that uh, with the infusion of dynamics methods, it, uh, it were then solved. So it was mostly my work on the almost mature operator that was, that was uh, mentioned with solution of three specific problems that had been posed. And, uh, and finally, uh, it was some work that I did on, uh, on intervention transformation at Tite Miller flow, that's some kind of uh, uh, renormalization dynamics in um, certain uh, modular space of uh, abelian differentials or translational surface, which uh, answered uh, so to, to what was mentioned was basically three, uh, three kind of open questions that uh, were very basically related to the uh, behavior of uh, the typical behavior of respect to the bag measure, which kind of uh, led to, to kind of the theory being quite fairly complete after those uh, works. Yeah, and we know that you completed uh, many of your works jointly with uh, many co-authors. And uh, yesterday, Misha Lubich pointed out about some of your very special attitudes towards collaboration. Could you please tell us more uh, about collaboration and the importance of it and your attitudes towards collaboration? I don't know what he said, but uh, I, I, I like collaborating and uh, it's an opportunity to learn things. It's an opportunity to... Uh, when you explain things that you're thinking to your co-author so that uh, to explain what, what's your plan or it clarifies many things in a kind of much more um, effective way and that leads to new ideas than if you just keep it for, uh, to yourself but of course you learn a lot also and it's also particularly good uh, efficient way to uh, enter a new field that you learn kind of absorb quite a bit of uh, material from, uh, from your collaborators and uh, also it's a kind of uh, you gives you opportunity to work with a very broad, uh, um, the, 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 each collaborator works very differently and sometimes if you go from one to, uh, to another, it kind of works in a completely different way. It's kind of a very good experience to, uh, to have all those interactions. And did your research uh, interests evolve over time at all? Well, I start, what I started during my uh, thesis uh, was kind of just one dimension dynamics and then uh, once I went to Paris I, I was exposed to other things that led to those other other works and I keep uh, working on slightly different things uh, what were always connected to dynamics but already getting closer to analysis sometimes depends on uh, and it uh, depends on uh, what, what I'm learning so uh, I, I don't I spend still time work on things that I did in my thesis but I work on many other things uh, nowadays. You said before that uh, uh, mathematics and mathematical work sometimes is not linear, sometimes you go through periods of inactivity and sometimes you work a lot. So uh, uh, speaking of those times when you work a lot, what are some sources of your inspiration? Well, when, uh, usually the parts that you work a lot, is, uh, you're just thinking all the time and hoping that some idea 
some idea you come, uh, there's no particular source of inspiration. It's just at some point uh, what you're thinking finally finally works, but uh, this is some random moment, uh, and uh, well, if you knew exactly what to do, then it would be very efficient, but it kind of just happens or doesn't happen at some moment. And uh, so just keep working, hoping that at some point it will crack, but, uh, but otherwise it's fine. Okay, and uh, we know that mathematics uh, is very competitive field. So, do you think uh, the competition in mathematics is a very positive factor, or could it be a negative factor, and why would you think? There's some competition, but lots of cooperation. So, uh, people can work on different problems, and there's space to, uh, there's just not one set of problems that anybody has to, to work on then specific, and then they can work on different facets of the problem, and then bring together and, uh, and discuss. Uh, so, uh, so the, from this point of view, I think that uh, just pure competition and try to not uh, kind of led into kind of uh, not discussing the results. I don't think it's happening that much. Uh, it certainly would not be good. But uh, of course, it can be some motivation to some kind of minor, sp uh, minor level. But, uh, but I'd say that uh, it should be avoided, uh, essentially. Yeah, and we know that you travel a lot. Uh, so, when do you first come to visit a different country or different city? Other than working on mathematics, what are some things that you would like to do for fun? I usually don't try to do anything because I, I'm kind of uh, too busy uh, with the traveling already that I try to kind of... Uh, I, I don't do much tourist, tourism or uh, I just try to find where there are, there are some... Uh, uh, reasonable food or uh, reasonable so, so so the basic things or if I'm staying for some more time or can I buy things and, uh, but not uh, kind of very special uh, other things like this just practical things so uh, these days um, there are a lot of uh, different brilliant mathematical ideas are coming out and do you think mathematics should be popularized what do you think uh, general public needs to know about mathematics and mathematicians my concern is mostly that um, uh, people that uh, so not for everybody uh, it's not particularly my concepts may be important but uh, it is that uh, people with talent uh, should uh, know that uh, they can be mathematicians that is a good career and uh, they don't uh, go they, they consider it. So I think the popularization of math uh, leads uh, to many more people uh, accepting this possibility and then uh, in principle we don't lose some, so many talents as uh, we might just because of reasons that uh, they think that's not a career. So uh, I find, find it important from this point of view essentially. So uh, what, is, uh, what role does mathematics play in your life? Is it a career or is it both pers personal and professional passion? No, it's Kind of, well, I don't know <laughs> how to say it's been it's just a mathematician. It's a kind of a life. Uh, <laughs> it's a, life. It's a lifestyle, and, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. yeah and please uh, tell us uh, briefly about some of your goals in particular uh, relating to your future work or maybe collaborative work. I think find it very difficult to anticipate what's going to going to come down, come in the near future. So if you want to talk about something that's not work in progress yet, then uh, it's completely hopeless to to imagine things develop by completely uh, random and it's better like this. Because uh, if you could plan, you'd lose a lot of. Uh, if it's something that you can plan, it's something that essentially you know what to do, and it's much less exciting. So if you're going to say something, well, this in my experience, it always changed. So uh, I can't can't say exactly. So, so you th you think there are a lot of spontaneity in mathematics, right? No, there is a. Of course, we don't know what's how the ideas will work or not. So uh, you can't uh, unless you, do, you already know that the idea work. You can't anticipate that uh, something will work will go in the good direction. W what will work is what, what I'm going to to be working on. But uh, I can't tell right now. Yeah, thank you very much. And uh, just before we conclude our interview, we would like to know, uh, were you surprised at all when you got the Brain Prize? What were your, uh, maybe, like I wouldn't say feelings, but uh, did you anticipate getting the prize? Well, I knew it before uh, coming oh, here, yeah. of course. But, uh, but when you first found out? When I first found out, I was kind of very happy. Uh, so basically, uh, it was... Uh, uh, well, I knew that they were, they, they were giving the brain prize. I knew that uh, there would be a possibility. Uh, I, I thought maybe uh, it was kind of, uh, maybe they had already decided or something. I was kind of, uh, I was a bit surprised, yes. 
Yeah, thank you very much. And uh, once again, we would like to thank Arthur for giving us uh, a portion of his time. And we would like to congratulate you again. And we hope to see you again soon. Okay, thank you. Thank you.